Welcome to Stage Door Chicago. I'm Michael Roberts. And we have a very special guest with us today. Let me give you some facts before I introduce him. The show that he is starring in has a worldwide box office of over $3 billion and counting. It is the world's largest grossing entertainment venture, surpassing the movie Titanic and E.T. Over 80 million people have seen the show worldwide. And he's here in Chicago. Yes, he's here, the Phantom of the Opera. Jason Mills, thank you for joining me. Hi, Michael. Hello, Jason. <laughs> I love the voice. So how does a biology major from Harvard become the Phantom of the Opera? Well, I'd always been acting and singing for my whole life. Uh, my father actually directed the shows at my high school. Uh, he was an English and drama teacher, and he directed me in a, a Gilbert and Sullivan troupe, which I was wow. in from the time I was seven years old. Uh, so uh, I've, I've been doing musical theater all my life, but I'd always kind of considered it a, a hobby and not something one could really go into. So, uh, you know, I, I also was very strong academically uh, and, uh, you know, decided I, I wanted to be a doctor and... Uh, you know, got myself into Harvard and... So and when you were dissecting a frog, school. you would sing Oklahoma. Exactly, exactly. Right. And, <laughs> well, tell me about Harvard, because you were vice president of the Hasty Pudding Theater Company. Yeah, I think I, I was actually very fortunate to go to Harvard, and, and, and you know, not just academically, but in terms of my theater development as well, because I, there, there's no drama major. Uh, but you can take a lot of classes with the ART people, uh, and uh, you know uh, there are a lot of extracurricular opportunities for people who are not in the drama department. Whereas if you go somewhere else and you're a biology major, it's actually very difficult to get into shows often. So uh, one of the great things about it is the, the Hasty Pudding Theatricals, which is the oldest uh, theatrical group in the country. Uh, and they do an original musical every year. 1795 it started. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You, you've done your research. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's a great time. We, we, you know, it's 14 guys, and we put together this, uh, this big show. Uh, there's, it's all male, so half of the parts are in drag. Right. Uh, I make a terrible woman, I, I can assure <laughs> you of it. Uh, <laughs> well, you do understudy Carlotta sometimes, don't you? <laughs> uh, occasionally, but only in the shower. There you go. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and what shows were you in? Uh, well, they, they're all original. They have you know strange titles. The last one was "I Get No Kick for, from Campaign." Mm -hmm. uh, what was the title of it? Uh, Morocco Round the Clock was another one. Uh, Me and My Galaxy. Nice, nice. Uh, so it, it's great, and we uh, we invite big celebrities. So you may see the coverage in uh, People magazine. And they all, and you always give them awards. Yes. So uh, you know, I got to roast Goldie Hawn and. Uh, Samuel Jackson, my senior year, and uh, other years we had Julia Roberts. Uh, we had a great time there. And you were also Sky Masterson in Guys and Dolls. Sky Masterson in Guys and Dolls uh, with my, my good friend Jack Huberman, who's also an actress. Uh, she won the Broadway Idol competition last year. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a, a good tradition of people coming out of Harvard going into musical theater. And you grew up in Maine? Yes, yes, rural Maine up near Acadia National Park. And what does your father do? Uh, my father now is retired, and, and they, they run a bed and breakfast, my parents do. Mm -hmm. uh, but my father was an, an English and drama teacher there, uh, and a guidance counselor and a principal later on. You're making me really want to lower my voice here. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know, it's kind of intimidating. Yeah, I know it voice, is. <laughs> so tell me about your road to Phantom. Um, well, uh, after I left Harvard, I, I spent a long time uh, as a non-equity actor doing summer stock and, and things like that and then I uh, finally got my equity card at uh, the West Virginia Public and then you know worked my way up through the off-Broadway circuit I did Forbidden Broadway for a long time. You were in Forbidden Broadway SVU? Yes, yes I opened that that version and uh, I'm on the cast recording as well and that was really just a great time. Were you parried uh, Hugh Jackman? Yes, yes I, I played and worked in my Australian <laughs> accent very hard and uh, uh, it was a good time. They had me in a you know a leopard uh, print shirt and gold lame pants, and you know we were we, we had a good time there. So, and you were in one of my favorite shows that never quite got off the ground, but it was called Ilya. It was based on Twelfth Night, the Shakespeare play. And uh -huh. You played Sir Andrew. Yes, yes. Tell me about that experience. Uh, so there's this wonderful young composer, Pete Mills, who's not related to me. It's not, not pure nepotism. But I actually uh, you know, answered one of his ads in backstage and got involved with him in the first show I ever did in New York called The Taxi Cabaret. Uh, and since then, I've done three of his musicals, Illyria, which you mentioned, uh, and Lonely Rhymes and The Taxi Cabaret and a few different And he actually won the Jonathan Larson Award. 
uh, precisely. Just produce yes. the show. Yes. Uh, so it, he does really fantastic work. He went to Princeton uh, as an undergraduate and then did the uh, New York. Uh, there's a little rivalry, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. Harvard and Princeton I know. And, going and on he, there. There's the Triangle Club, which is kind of their <laughs> like hasty pudding yeah, club right. there. And so we, you know, we would be at <laughs> odds about that every now and again. But he, he, he looked past it and cast me anyway. Uh, and, you know, we, we had a great time. Illyria is a, a wonderful show with beautiful Absolutely. music. And I, I'm really sad that it hasn't had a life beyond uh, our. our our production. You know. Well, hopefully it will. Yes, hopefully someday someone's going to discover his it stuff. Because it got across the board great reviews. Yeah, every, everyone I've talked to has loved it. Um, and you played Sir Andrew. Sir Andrew. Which is kind of a <laughs> <laughs> ironic because now you're doing Sir Andrew's show. Yes, so I've got a long history with Sir Andrew. Very different Sir Andrew, you know. It's a, <laughs> that's it's a, that's true. a much more comedic uh, version of it in, in Illyria. <laughs> yes, <but laughs> that's true. <laughs> and how did you get involved with? Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber's fan of the opera. You played the auctioneer. Uh, yes, so uh, I actually started out here on the tour um, playing the uh, marksman, which is a very tiny role, uh, but understudying the phantom and Ral. Uh, and I did that for a year and then got transferred to the Broadway show uh, and was the auctioneer there uh, and went on many times as the phantom and as Ral. Um, and then I finally got the call to come out here as the actual guy. Interestingly, you played... Um, Phantom in Yeston and Kopitz production yes, as yeah. well. Yes, yeah, and that was actually my first experience with the Phantom, and when I first started, you know, digging into the role and reading the book and, you know, starting my research on it, and it's a really great piece, and it's kind of sad that it never made it to Broadway and hasn't had as strong a life as right. this show uh, has, and it's, you know, it, it's very different. But it's a very human story, and they've taken a lot of a, a lot of liberties with it, and added different yes, characters and, and changed Especially things at the more. End. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which we'll so. give away, but it's very different. Yeah, you know, there there are a few numbers that are kind of clunkers in there in there as well. But yes. uh, the the Phantom's uh, sort of long soliloquy at the end that that comes from a William Blake poem is really one of my favorite pieces that I've ever sung. Uh, and it's a it's a great. Well, role. what's the difference between the two Phantoms, Andrew Lloyd Webber's? And the Copet version. Well, uh, the Copet has kind of changed some of the history of the Phantom and uh, given him this this real relationship with uh, with a father uh, that that uh, he puts in as one of the managers of the opera. Uh, so it, it's he's got a, a lot more going on in terms of real interpersonal relationships uh, that he's developed with people and. Uh, it takes away, I think, a little of the mystery. In 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 the Lloyd Webber, it's a more mysterious and you know difficult to engage kind of figure, and, and you kind of come at him from the side. Whereas right. I think in the Yeston Copet, you kind of really get in to see him a, a little more clearly. For the and Lloyd Webber version, you're really not on stage for a long period of time. I it's mean, true. in the second act, from Wandering Child on, you, you kind of appear, but. The right. first act, you, right, you the don't come act, for about just 20 sort of minutes. glimpses and hints, right. uh, and uh, it's it's very important. I really rely heavily on my fellow cast members to establish my character and, right. and my presence on the stage. Uh, you know, if I don't have a strong Madame Jury out there creating that kind of atmosphere of fear around me, uh, you know, it, it can be very difficult when I come on because yes. you're right. It, it goes like 25 minutes into the show before you even hear my voice. Right. Yeah. So, what is your favorite number from the show? Um, my favorite is is the the long stretch which we call the final layer, um, and and that's when you know you've got the mask off that's and right. you're getting around and really getting getting into it heavily with Christine and you know it, it, it's a real adrenaline rush at that point and you're you're really really deep into it. And, and it, isn't so. that really the basis of what makes this family of the opera work so well? I mean, take away the chandeliers, take away the drapes, take away the sets. It's a relationship about the three characters, Raul, Phantom, and Christine. Absolutely. And it's the final layer that really brings that all together, and that's what makes the show work. Absolutely. You can take and everything else away, but in, unless you really care about the characters, you know, and you do. Yes. You do, and you feel the Phantom's pain, and you feel Christine's pain as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and our current Christine, Sarah Ford, she does a great job. She's but amazing. She's really, really a stunning actress, and to to have that interplay with her every night and, and uh, I get something a little different from her and I'll give her something a little bit different and you know our relationship has been evolving uh, you know we've I've only been out here a week so right. uh, it, it's really fun to play in that scene there, there are a lot of you can take a lot of liberties even within the structure of what's given to you and have you seen other phantoms in the role 
I've seen many other fandoms. <laughs> I've, I've understudied, uh, you know, three different right. people. Uh, plus, I've seen all of the other understudies. Um, and, you know, I, I don't remember who it was who, who I saw, who was the first fandom I saw at the Wang Center in Boston when I was, when I was young. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I've, I've probably seen, you know, ten fandoms. Do so it. how do you make the part your own? Especially well, after a strong presence, like everybody associates the part with Michael Crawford. Right, right. His his shadow is kind of hanging Absolutely. over the role. But you know, I have a very different voice from him, so I've had to approach it just vocally uh, from a very different perspective. Uh, but the also acting wise, it, it's surprising how much liberty there is within the structure to kind of make your own decisions about things and. You know, of course, I've I've stolen things here and there. You know, Howard McGillen, who does it on Broadway, is a, is a very talented performer, and I, you know, I've learned a lot by watching him. But uh, isn't it about the hands? Uh, I've seen a couple <laughs> of fandoms interview because really, not only is your face covered up with a mask, you have the prosthetics under it, and then a wig. So really, your your face movements aren't your. You know, you can't do that much with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So everything's in your hands. Just. The gentle yeah, pushing. the hands and the and the vocal inflections are incredibly important, and I, I like to think of my hands as kind of conductor's hands. Right. So I think of him as you know he's been sitting in the opera and he watches the conductor, and that's what he wants to be like. So uh, you know I, I get a lot of kind of conductory kind of movements in, in my hands uh, when I do it. Is your phantom more fatherly to Christine? Um, uh, I mean there there is definitely a huge element of that. Uh, I feel that because I'm on the young side for phantoms, uh, I I don't play that up quite as much as some other people do. Uh, but it you know it's incredibly important, and and you know there's a reason why in the second act Christine's only solo in the entire show. Well, I mean, it, wishing you were somehow here. Again. Wishing you were somehow here again is about her father instead of about one of the two men that she is in this love triangle with. Uh, and you know, so the the father is there as a whole presence, and the right. phantom is using that as a tool to kind of reach Christine and get to her. Right. So well, it's, well, even it's very even important. Angel of Music, she she thinks it's the father, her father that's teaching her. Precisely. So Precisely. when you come out and sing, you say, "Wandering child, so mm -hmm. lost, so helpless," mm -hmm. like. Okay, am I in love with my dad here, <laughs> or what's yeah, going on? Yeah, so interestingly, there's an original lyric, uh, Far From My Fathering Gaze, right. which they've recently changed to Far Reaching right. Gaze, well, to, just to kind of get rid of that, you know, kind of scary... Uh, and in aspect. the original, Raul actually came in and sang, um, it was a trio. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize yes. that. Yes. Uh, then it became just the family, Christine, and Raul comes in, in later. And later. Hmm. So, have you had any phantom mishaps with uh, the of, boat? Uh, or of with course the... <laughs> there have. Uh, <laughs> uh, I luckily have not had any huge problems with the boats, but I, I've been on stage, you know, in other parts <laughs> and, and seen the boat stop and the phantom has to pull her out of the boat. Or one time Gary had to actually drag the boat off the stage himself. <laughs> Uh, you know, but mine have been more costume mishaps where I've I've ripped my pants all the way down to the ankle, <laughs> and uh, you know had parts of the makeup fall off. So you know I'm kissing Christine, and my lip kind of you know comes is hanging down. And I just kind of ripped it off, <laughs> threw it off the stage. That's lovely. Uh, you know, so there there are definitely things like that. They do come up. And, you know, that's one of the joys of of live theater. And what is the process of the makeup? Uh, it's about forty five minutes here. Uh, and it, it starts with a bald cap. They, they, they seal that down with a spirit gum, which is wreaking havoc on my complexion as we speak. <laughs> uh, and then they start putting some prosthetic, there are some pre-made prosthetic pieces that they put on, uh, which they didn't have when they originally started the show, and it took nearly two right. hours uh, to do the makeup back then. So they, they've kind of streamlined the process, thankfully. Thank God uh, for you. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've understudied Raul as well. Yes. Does playing Raul help you understand the Phantom more? Because a lot of people, or a lot of <laughs> Phantoms, have come from playing Raul first. Yeah, the, mo most people do. And in fact, you know, John Cudillo, who I just took right. over for, uh, was a, a Raul for a long right. time before becoming the Phantom. Um, and yeah, I, I do believe that it informs your, your perspective on, on where the Phantom's coming from. And, uh, you know, definitely on, on what everyone else on stage needs from you and is looking for from you. Uh, you know, it's, I've played nearly every male role, role in the show, and it's, you know, it definitely helps. Unlike to, the Hasty Pudding Theater it. Company where you played every female role in the exactly, show, too. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and tell me about Past of No Return, when you hand her the ring, and then she rips off. Do you, when I've seen some fans play the part, they almost become 
childlike mm -hmm. in the in the final layer. Um, do you relate to almost? Yeah, uh, yeah, to some extent. Uh, you know, it's such a deep betrayal, and uh, there, there's so much pain going on there that you know it's difficult to conceive of of feeling that that same amount in my normal life here. So I have to kind of re you have to kind of revert to that childlike state where your emotions are so big and so raw and so deeply felt. Right. Um, you know that uh, there there is an aspect of that. So who were your musical influences growing up? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, Les Mis was my, was my first love as a show. Uh, it was the first show I ever saw on Broadway. Uh, and, you know, so uh, Colm Wilkinson was definitely a, 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 a big thing for me. I, I listened to, you know, Richard Kiley in Man of La Mancha a lot. Yeah, that was, that was a big thing for me growing up. In my senior year of high school, that was my big show that I did. Was, you know, I you got the, the Don Quixote voice, too. Yeah, so <laughs> it, that, that was fun. Uh, you know, as I, as I got on, I started, you know, I love Brian Stokes Mitchell, his voice. And, you know, uh, once I started actually lear learning more about musical theater and, and getting deeper into things, you know, Sweeney Todd and Len Carey, you know, those are big. So were your parents musical? Uh, yes, yes, and we have a whole musical family. I have four brothers. Uh, and the Mills brothers. The Mills oh, brothers, nice. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, uh, as I told you before, my dad w was a performer right. uh, and directed uh, this Gilbert and Sullivan troupe that we had and other uh, community theater. Uh, and uh, we actually had a band together for a while uh, wow. with, with some of my older brothers and, and, and my dad. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we... Singing was a was a huge part of of growing up for me, and you know we'd we'd pull up the fake book, and my dad would sit at the piano, and we'd we'd sing through you know the scores to all kinds of shows. And they of course have seen you as the Phantom. Yes, several times, uh, and, and they're they're thrilled to, to to come down and see me do it on Broadway. So where do you go from Chicago then? Where's uh, next stop is Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. Yes. So we we, we kind of bounce all over the place after that. It's Omaha. Uh, and this is the Music Box Tour, it's called, correct? Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. been traveling now for 15 years? 15 it? years, yeah. The anniversary is next Sunday, uh, and we'll, we'll hopefully have a big party for that. What's next for you after The Phantom? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, you know, my, my contract here is a year, uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens after that. Because you might be ending up in L.A. Uh, yes, well, ne near L.A., and uh, the, the schedule's up in the air after Portland, Oregon. And just to clarify, Gary Mills or Greg Mills, I guess Greg Mills, Greg Mills is yes. not your brother. Not my brother. The show. <laughs> we, we are unrelated. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. And everybody, go out and see the Phantom of the Opera at the Cadillac Palace Theater. It's playing through January fifth, um, and all the links to get tickets are on our website. And of course, you can go to www.broadwayinchicago.com for showtimes and information. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.